What's going on guys? This is Von Lick Puma, back with another Borderlands 2 build video, and today I'd like to go over how I would build Salvador the Gunzerker at level 80 OP10. Now like a number of my other build videos, this video will go over Salvador's skill tree in depth, how I build the character at level 80 OP10, some potential skill point substitutions you can make to that level 80 OP10 build, and of course some gear recommendations as well. To give you some idea, this video will focus on an all-rounder type build for Salvador that will allow you to do just about everything from mobbing to raid bossing. So definitely be sure to smash like on this video if it helped you out, and failing that, be sure to smash like because you like the color blue. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get started here by going over the skill tree and then work our way from there. While Salvador's skill tree can appear to be somewhat intimidating at first glance, the important thing that you need to know is that Gunlust helps to improve damage, Rampage is great for boosting Gun Zerking's abilities, and Brawn is good for improving your defense. We won't need quite as much investment in Brawn for some reasons that I'll get into later on in this video, but for now, we'll mainly focus on both Gunlust and Rampage. Starting with the Gunlust subtree, this tree contains quite possibly some of Salvador's most powerful skills, along with a number of abilities that will help with DPS. Starting with Tier 1, we have both Locked and Loaded and Quick Draw, where the former allows you to reload your gun and get a fiery boost, while the latter will improve your weapon swap speed and slightly improve your crit damage. Generally, I pick up both of these because both affect the offhand wall gun zerking, even if the bonuses themselves are kinda small. So, when putting together a build, I usually pick up both. Moving on to Tier 2, we have both I'm Your Huckleberry and All in One. I'm Your Huckleberry is a skill you're going to want if you're putting together a pistol build, since the damage and reload speed bonus affects pistols only. As for All in One, the damage bonus is good, but requires you to swap weapons, which makes it far less desirable in my opinion. So, of these two, pick up Huckleberry if you use pistols, but otherwise, you can skip all in one. This brings us to Tier 3, where we have Divergent Likeness, Autoloader, and Money Shot. Money Shot is arguably Salvador's best skill due to its ludicrous damage potential, so it's definitely something you're going to want to have. Divergent Likeness, on the other hand, boosts damage while conserving two guns of the same type, and provides an accuracy boost with guns of opposite or different types. So, regardless of what weapons you use, you should get some decent benefit. As for Autoloader, I think you can get by without it, though it could be useful with rocket launchers and anything with an absurdly long reload time. But in general, I usually just go with Divergent Likeness and Money Shot for my builds, so be sure to pick them up. And finally, we have Tiers 4 through 6. For Tier 4, Down Not Out is incredibly useful since it allows Gunserking while in fight for your life, so it's a must-have. Lay Waste, on the other hand, is a decent skill, though it's worth noting that it's a kill skill and aspects of it don't work in the offhand while Gunserking. Still, it is boosted by a number of comms, so at least put a point here if you so desire. As for Tier 5 and 6, Tier 5's Keep It Piping Hot is a pretty good skill that boosts gun, melee, and grenade damage while not gunserking, though it can potentially proc while you're gunserking, provided you're taking advantage of the Get Some skill, and thus it's a good idea to max this skill out. As for No Kill Like Overkill, like Money Shot, this is a very powerful skill that's a must have, so I would say you should absolutely go ahead and put the point here, otherwise, you're just losing out on some massive damage potential. If you ask me, as long as you make sure to pick up Money Shot, No Kill Like Overkill, keep it piping hot, and last longer within the Gunlust subtree, I'd say you're doing pretty well. However, it's now about time we discussed the Rampage subtree. So Rampage is primarily devoted to boosting Gun Zerking's abilities, though there are a few utility skills here and there that are also worth taking. More specifically, and in Tier 1, we have Inconceivable and Filled to the Brim. Inconceivable is quite possibly one of Salvador's best skills thanks to how it allows your shots to not consume ammo, and by extension, allows for money shot chains. As for Filled to the Brim, it's by no means a bad skill as it improves magazine size and ammo pool capacity, however, you may find you can get by without it, so if you had to choose between both it and Inconceivable, Inconceivable is the obvious choice. Moving on to Tier 2, we have All in the Reflexes and Last Longer. 
The former allows the player to improve their reload speed and melee damage, while last longer improves your gun circling duration by up to 15 seconds at 5 out of 5. Less longer is definitely the better skill here, since anything that improves conserking is generally good, while all all in the reflexes really does is allow the player to reload your guns faster. Both of these skills are generally nice to have in builds, however, I would say last longer is the better skill in my opinion, so again, if it's a choice between the two, I would go ahead and pick last longer. This brings us to tier 3, which includes I'm Ready Already, Steady As She Goes, and 5 Shots or 6. Of these three, I'm Ready Already ends up being redundant as higher tier skills within the subtree allow you to cool down your action skill while gun zerking. As for our other skills, it can be a good idea to put a point in Steady As She Goes so long as you're not using Hyperion weapons, while 5 Shots or 6 is a kill skill that's somewhat misleading as it's more often than not going to lower your ammo consumption rather than adding ammo to your magazine. Even still, it could be a nice skill to have so feel free to put a few points here in addition to a point in Steady As She Goes so long as you're not using any Hyperion weapons for the latter. And now we have our final three tiers, which include Tier 4's Yippee and Double Your Fun, Tier 5's Get Some, and Tier 6's Keep Firing. All four of these skills are highly recommended as Yippee boosts your gun circling duration, Double Your Fun allows you to throw two grenades instead of one, Get Some allows you to reduce your cooldown on gun circling by shooting enemies, and Keep Firing allows you to boost your fire rate and reload speed by simply continuing to fire both of your guns while gun circling. All four of these skills are so good that I'd recommend you get all four, so be sure to get all four and max them out. Ultimately, most skills in Rampage are great to have and can really help make gun circling more powerful. But now it's about time we discussed our last subtree, which is the Brawn subtree. As mentioned earlier, the Brawn subtree is mostly intended for improving Salvador's defensive capabilities. The thing is, this skill tree can be somewhat redundant thanks to how Moxie weapons will allow the player to heal from most damage dealt. However, we will go over all of the skills here, even if it's a little more abbreviated compared to how we discussed both the Gunlust and Rampage subtrees. For Tier 1, you have Hard to Kill and Insight, with the latter being most useful. War Hard to Kill isn't really bad or anything, it's mostly just good for boosting your max health and allowing for some passive health regen, with this latter ability being accomplished by simply using a Moxie weapon. That and Insight speed boost tends to be more useful, so of these two skills, I'm going to have to pick Insight for Tier 1. For Tier 2, we have Asbestos, which is a skill that decreases the duration of status effects while I'm the Juggernaut improves the player's damage reduction. If you ask me, I'm the Juggernaut's bonus is redundant, since you're already getting some damage reduction while you are gun circling. Asbestos, on the other hand, will reduce your burn, corrode, shock, or slag status effects, which is actually pretty good. So, if you are going to have to pick a skill in Tier 2, I would go with Asbestos. This brings us to Tier 3, which includes the likes of Ain't Got Time to Bleed, Fistful of Hurt, and All Out of Bubblegum. Like Hard to Kill, you may find that Ain't Got Time to Bleed's health regen isn't really necessary thanks to Moxie weapons, while Fistful of Hurt can occasionally be useful from time to time and is actually pretty useful when taking on Master Gi. This of course leaves All Out of Bubblegum which boosts fire rate provided your shield is depleted, and this is actually a pretty good skill provided you pair it with the Rough Rider. So for this tier, definitely pick up All Out of Bubblegum and maybe pick up Fistful of Hurt. This leaves us with the skills in tiers 4 through 6. While bust that can slow down is nice, it requires a lot of investment compared to insight in tier 1. While just got real on the other hand really only works the lower your health is, which if you ask me is a deal breaker. For tier 5, you have sexy T-Rexy, which is similar to hard to kill and ain't got time to bleed, and that the health regen is less useful than moxie weapons are. This leaves tier 6's come at me bro, which, if you ask me, again, I think this skill is less useful provided you have good moxie weapons. Granted, the damage reduction is nice, but again, considering the high skill point investment you need to actually get here, you may find that this skill just really isn't worth it. Ultimately, I don't think you'll ever need to go past tier 3 in brawn, but of course, feel free to experiment if you wish. 
So now that we've gone ahead and gone over the entire skill tree for Salvador pretty in depth, it's about time we got around to discussing our build, which we will do right now. As you can see, our skill tree distribution here is 28 in Gunlust, 32 in Rampage, and 15 in Brawn. Since we are using Moxie weapons, you won't need to invest as heavily in Brawn, which ends up bringing up a lot of those points for both Gunlust and Rampage. That said, picking up Insight, Asbestos, and All Out of Bubblegum and Brawn will be the best path in my opinion, since most of the other skills within those tiers are largely redundant. For Gunlust, I went ahead and decided to pick up Locked and Loaded and Quick Draw from Tier 1. I totally skipped Tier 2. I picked up Divergent Likeness and Money Shot from Tier 3. And then I went ahead and maxed out everything else in Tiers 4 through 6, except for Lay Waste, where I just put one skill point. Picking up Money Shot, Down Not Out, Keep It Piping Hot, and No Kill Like Overkill are really no brainers, while picking up Divergent Likeness isn't a half bad choice either. After that, I've gone ahead and gone with Locked and Loaded, and Quick Draw, since both are decent skills and should work in both hands while gun zerking. As for Rampage, I've gone ahead here and picked up just about everything except for I'm Ready Already, which is redundant and filled to the brim, which I would pick up, but I just didn't have enough skill points. Most of the rest of these skills are either great for improving your gun zerking duration, like Last Longer, Yippee Ki Yay, and Get Some, while others are good for boosting gun zerking's effects, such as Steady As She Goes, Keep Firing, and Double Your Fun. This leaves us with Inconceivable, which is a must-have skill and should be maxed out, along with All in the Reflexes and 5 Shots or 6. These last two are good skills to have as the former boosts reload speed, and the latter helps reduce ammo consumption. However, I do think you could pull points from both of these if you wanted to do some skill point substitutions, which, speaking of skill point substitutions, we could talk about one of those right now. One potential substitution you could do is for if you want to put together a pistol build. What I would do is pull 4 points from all in the reflexes and 1 point from 5 shots or 6, and then put those 5 skill points into I'm Your Huckleberry. This will allow you to get the advantage of maxing out I'm Your Huckleberry while also maintaining some investment in all in the reflexes and 5 shots or 6, so you could retain some compatibility with some of Salvador's better class mods. The only real downside is that I'm Your Huckleberry's bonuses only benefit the right hand while gun zerking, which can also be said of Divergent Likeness and 5 shots or 6. But if you do plan on using a Renegade Com with plus 6 to I'm Your Huckleberry, specking this way would be a good way to go and should make your Unkipped Herald hit that much harder. After that, a lot of our other potential substitutions here are pretty small. For example, maybe if you plan on using Hyperion weapons, you may not want to use Steady As She Goes as the recoil reduction doesn't play well with Hyperion's reverse recoil mechanics. If you were to move this point, I'd probably put it in 5 shots or 6 to round out investment, or you could put it into Fistful of Hurt which would be helpful while taking on Master Gi. Alternatively, if you decided you wanted Fistful of Hurt and Steady As She Goes at the same time, you could pull the extra point from either All in the Reflexes or 5 Shots or 6. Otherwise, I think you'll find keeping the rest of the skill tree the same makes the most sense. Obviously, feel free to experiment and play around with some of the other substitutions if you want to get skills like Autoloader or something. But again, I think this setup, along with these substitutions, makes the most sense. However, it's about time we discussed gear, and to start, let's discuss class mods. Realistically speaking, I'd say there are really only going to be three class mods you ever need while playing Salvador at higher levels. The first is the Chaotic Evil class mod, and more specifically, the version that provides plus 6 to Money Shot, and ideally provides plus 5 to Asbestos. This will be your main damage output class mod and is perfect for taking on the game's raid bosses, thanks to the boost in critical hit damage and fire rate. After that, I'd say your other best options for Salvador are either the Legendary Gunserker or Legendary Hoarder class mod. You can also go with a Renegade class mod if you want to go for a pistol build, but really I'd say both the Legendary Gunserker and Hoarder are where it's at, since the former is perfect for Gunserking almost indefinitely, while the Hoarder is nice for quickly recovering ammo. 
With our current build, you should be able to get a decent amount of compatibility with both of these class mods, though you may find that you're not going to be able to get the bonus from Phil to the Bram on the Hoarder, as that will require a respec. As for grenades, you can use whatever you want here. Typically, I'd probably recommend the Magic Missile for mobbing and a Slag Bouncing Betty for raid bosses, but you could potentially use some shock grenades as well. For example, either the Chain Lightning, Stormfront, or newly added Electric Chair could end up working quite well, and since you can throw two grenades at once, you may find any traditionally offensive grenades work well too. So really, and again, it's a matter of preference and you could feasibly use whatever you want. For shields, I think your main choice should be obvious. Going with the Rough Rider is really a no-brainer here, since it works so well with Inconceivable, and also benefits from all out of bubblegum as well. The downside to this shield though, is that it's not quite as defensive as other shields since it has a capacity of zero. But if you do want an alternative, really any of the popular go-to shields like the Blockade, Sham, or Antagonist work quite well on Salvador, and should provide some additional bulk should you find you need it. For relics, it's like any other character at max level. Going with the Bone of the Ancients for elemental weapons and a Heart of the Ancients for non-elemental weapons is a good strategy. However, on Salvador, it might also be a good idea to pick up a Sheriff's Badge provided you plan on putting together a pistol build, as well as an explosive elemental relic. The former is nice for pistol builds, while the latter works well with any explosive weapon, including the Unkempt Herald. Ultimately, any of these four relics should work pretty well and produce fantastic results. This of course brings us to our final set of gear recommendations, which are going to be for specific weapons. If you ask me, there are really only four weapons you'll ever need on Salvador, and on top of that, all four can be equipped in slot simultaneously. The first weapon is one you may have heard me talk about a few times already, and that is the Unkempt Herald. Provided you're able to get a double variant, the Herald is one of the most powerful raw damage weapons in all of Borderlands 2. It's easily in the top 5 as far as Borderlands 2 weapons go, and whether you're doing a pistol or more conventional Zerker type build, it should work great on Salvador. The second weapon is the Grog Nozzle. The Grog Nozzle is a powerful moxie weapon that works great on all characters, however it becomes massively overpowered on Salvador provided it's dual wielded in the offhand. This allows you to take advantage of all of the Grog Nozzle's special effects, which include its powerful healing, its slight crit boosting abilities, and its drunk effect, which will up the projectile count at the expense of reduced fire rate. The third weapon is the Interfacer. While the Herald is powerful, the Interfacer might actually be a little bit more powerful provided you're able to consistently score criticals. Interestingly, many of Salvador's abilities help fix a lot of the Interfacer's downsides, which allow you to use one of these weapons very effectively. So after you get a Herald, it might be a good idea to get two of these in at least Fire and Corrosive Element. And then of course we have to talk about our final weapon, which is the Lady Fist. Though this is a powerful pistol in its own right, it may actually be more useful on Salvador in the offhand to help boost the crit bonus of any weapon you're dual wielding in the right hand. More specifically, the Lady Fist can be used to massively boost the critical hit damage of the Interfacer, which can be extremely useful for raid boss fights. So again, and like all of the other weapons I've just discussed, it's really a must have. Overall though, these four weapons should cover you 99% of the time, after that, just feel to experiment with whatever else you can find, as I highly doubt you're going to be able to find better weapons than the Unkempt Herald and Interfacer, and better utility weapons than the Grog Nozzle or Lady Fist. Otherwise guys, I think you'll find this video was pretty comprehensive, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, definitely be sure to smash that like button, click the bell so you can be notified when I upload more Borderlands videos, and as always, and again, Thank you all so much for supporting this channel. Take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.